ज्ञानेन आकाशकल्पेन धर्मगगनोपम ज्ञेयाभेदेन संबुद्ध संबंधे द्विपदा The word dharma is perhaps the most frequently used word among all the scriptures of dharmic religions. Dharmic religions include Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, and uh, the grand sanatana dharma <clears throat> in the scriptures of all these uh what we may call as religions dharma comes everywhere in all scriptures not only this in india almost all people maybe i think i, I did not see the recent uh, update we may be 125 crore or 130 130 crore population among them almost all people including converts people use the word dharma <coughs> converted muslims converted christians of india hindu muslims this is how they are called us in middle east maybe hindu muslims or hindu christians they all buddhist sikhs hindus in general they all use this word dharma and they apply the word dharma where do they apply this word dharma if some indian does any activity his mind asks this person is it dharmic am i doing dharma so from dharma point of view he sees any action he judges whether it is dharmic or adharmic so such an importance is given to dharma the word dharma but uh, how many of us understand this word dharma in a proper sense it's not that nobody understands we understand it's something like uh, uh in brahma sutra's beginning there is a vichara by bhashyakara is self understood or not hmm. is atman understood or not we all have this experience i exist it's not that we don't have in the same way uh, some understanding is there regarding dharma to people are not using the word dharma without understanding it do they understand it's not so easy to say that they have understood they have not understood we may say partially they understand we may say they have a glimpse of understanding or why they are using the word dharma for a fraction of second they may have a glimpse of it they may have an intuition of it they are not using just like that the word only this kind of idea we can give but do we have a rational step by step understanding of dharma <clears throat> even though intuitively even an uneducated person the so called uneducated person understands what is dharma even a uh, even a peasant 
even a farmer, even a rickshaw wala, even an auto wala may use the word karma. Whom we may wrongly understand as uneducated. They may not have a proper school, college education, but their traditions, their ancestors have imported something in them to understand to some extent what is dharma. So that while doing something, they make this inquiry in India. Is it dharmic? Is it dharmic? Am I doing dharma? We need to ask this question. What is this dharma? So, before entering into the question, what is dharma? Let us first explore what is not dharma. Something like uh, to understand Atman. Neti neti ti adesha. What is not Atman, what is not Self, has to be explored. In the same way, what is not Self, this is the first topic. Among several uh, topics here in, this, in these discourses, the first discourse is about what is not Dharma. Under, under this title, what is not Dharma, what is going to come? Maybe... It may deal with some immorality or unethical things, uh, so-called bad things, bad practices, evil, evil forces, evil practices. On seeing the title, what is not dharma, one may guess I am going to talk about adharma. I am going to talk about negative forces. No. No, I am not going to talk about that today. <clears throat> Under the title, what is not dharma, I just want to talk about the misconceptions regarding dharma. Several things we call as dharma, they may not be dharma. For example, it has become a very common practice to translate dharma as religion. Okay. Under the title, what is not dharma, I may call first that religion is not dharma. Dharma is not religion. Uh, yes, religion is very positive. I am not telling religion is abharmic or religion is negative. No. And uh, Religion can be dharmic. Even our lecture today started with the statement dharmic religions. Religion can be dharmic. But uh, is religion synonym for dharma? Is religion a definition for dharma? If you ask this question, no. Religion cannot be definition for dharma. And unfortunately, in several texts, even by renowned scholars, the scholars whom we respect, when they translate the word dharma as religion, that's uh, irritating. I saw a Bhagavad Gita translation <coughs> by a translator whom I personally respect. Even there, I could see yada yada hi dharmasya gland glanir bhavati. This verse is translated as whenever religion diminishes to grow the religion, to establish the religion, I manifest, I come to this world, I descend. It's an irritating translation. Krishna's heart is not that. Here the word dharma has some other meaning which has nothing to do with the religion. <coughs> So, in this way, you can't translate wherever the word dharma comes in Ramayana or uh, Bhagavad Gita. Nowadays, the machine itself translates, computer translates the things. So, if you just give a command, 
uh, it will translate the whole of Bhagavad Gita. That computer may translate yada yada hi dharmasya as whenever religion diminishes. Okay. It is a irritating translation and a funny translation. The word dharma is identified with religion. I guess it must have started from North India. In South India, we have more clarity regarding this. In North, they have a practice to call the religions as dharmas, Bauddha dharma, Jaina dharma, and Hindu dharma. Ao koi bhi dharmi, ao koi bhi panthi. These kinds of verses we can see. Uh, perhaps in previous months, uh, somebody interviewed me in North India. The interviewer was giving a statement. He said, Ramayana is beyond the dharmas. He, he gave the statement, Ramayana is beyond the dharmas. Ramayana stands for value and not for dharma. Then I rectified it. I have to rectify. Uh, I, I understood the purpose of the per person. To the word dharma, he means religion. Ramayana is beyond religions. Okay. So, dharma, Ramayana is beyond religions is okay. That is fine. But Ramayana is beyond dharma, you can't tell. Ramayana represents dharma. Ramayana is dharma shastra. How dharma is different from religion that we have to understand. <coughs> Buddhism is called as Bauddha dharma. Yes, Buddhism can be dharmic. Jainism can be dharmic. But Buddhism cannot be a translation for the word dharma or definition for the word dharma. That is my thought. Some, yes. So, coming back to the point, one, if somebody is highly religious, can we call him as dharmic? Sometimes, or many a time, dharma and religion coincide, no doubt. But not always. By the name of religion, bloodshed can happen. By the name of religion, genocide can happen. Even uh, by the name of religion, forcing the woman can happen. Killing, massacring by the name of religion can happen. Religion can transgress the conscience, which is the most important pramana for dharma. Uh, there was a person named Timer in history. He is a grandfather of a barber, a famous barber. Okay. Well, Timer killed, massacred millions of people. It is uh, recorded that he was shedding tears while killing some children. At that time, he said, my conscience pricks, but I go against conscience, he said, for some other reason. So you can see in many places, this also going against conscience can happen. Due to the religion or in the name of religion, in the name of religion, these things can happen. And you see Aurangzeb. No doubt Aurangzeb is a very great devotee. But can he be called as dharmic? Aurangzeb is highly religious. Even Akbar is not that religious. Okay. Aurangzeb cannot take liquor. While Akbar quite often drunk. He meticulously followed the scripture. Who? Aurangzeb. Such a kind of person. 
but he could massacre many aurangzeb can be called as religious but not dharmic <laughs> dharmic by the name of religion fanaticism can run my religion alone is correct all other religions are wrong and the practitioners of all other religions have to be massacred these kinds of attitude may come through religion can these things be called as dharmic no so religion cannot be dharma so can we call dharma as a set of rules and regulations so rules and regulations are dharma no again rules and regulations can be dharmic can be adharmic too we can't call always rules and regulations as dharma i am remembered of a poem subramani bharati in panchali sapadam i am not quoting exactly but vedalam it, it comes something like this vedalam vendanaal satirangal pinandingum if a ghost becomes a king then it makes law for cannibalism this is a statement so it's not that always laws l a w s laws can be dharmas several times several great leaders went against laws there is a book named civil disobedience by a great thinker named toro on those days some laws they put down the blacks they put down the native americans there was uh, there was uh, an order by the government if somebody brings uh, a head of uh, native american then 10 pounds will be gifted this kind of government order was there on seeing this order the dharma is order therefore this has to be dharma can we call it as dharma no we can't call it as dharma <clears throat> in this street blacks cannot enter and in the very india on those days some boats were there indians and dogs are not allowed while british was ruling and uh, sometimes these rules can come in constitution also that is why in india with the same word civil disobedience gandhi ji happened to go against law go against law because laws are favorable to a particular community a particular group a particular so called race which is just notional today scientifically they have proven race as notional but still that race attachment can uh, impel the people to make the law race favoring laws race favoring uh, constitutions these things can come just to because some constitution says that this is wrong we can't we, we may obey it but we may not take it as dharmic or adharmic for example saudi arabian uh, constitution may say you can't worship an idol you can't worship an idol and uh, in saudi arabia people obey in saudi arabia idol worship is illegal it doesn't mean idol worship is uh, dharmic okay so you can't call law or constitution as dharma that is also wrong just if somebody prescribes rules and regulations then can we call it as dharma or adharma 
we can't sometimes dharma sorry law or constitution can be with raga raga and dvesha raga means a strong attachment towards something without any proper reason i have a strong attachment towards somebody if you ask for reason i don't know for example i may have strong attachment towards my child since because he or she is my child i have strong attachment no other reason no other reason so if i am also to write a law prepare a law i may say i may favor i will bring some law to favor my child this is called as raga strong like strong dislike desha with strong likes and dislikes the the laws may be framed rules and regulations may be framed and these rules and regulations are not prejudice free but dharma is something different dharma is prejudice free dharma's weir uh, nadi is dharma's heartbeat is loka samastha sukino bhavantu universal harmony universal peace and not just a narrowed prejudice okay i agree i we, we respect constitution we respect religion constitution is not bad human society needs constitution but and the constitution can be can be dharmic constitution can be dharmic but constitution cannot be definition for dharma that's that's my thought constitution is not definition of dharma law is not synonym to dharma as we may misunderstand dharma to be law or constitution or rule or regulation we may, we may misunderstand disciplines to be dharma disciplines to be dharma disciplines are good disciplines are not bad disciplines are good disciplines can be dharmic but can discipline define dharma wherever whoever is disciplined can he or she be called as dharmic for example hiranyakashipu was highly disciplined while he was performing tapasya can we call him dharmic ravana for example ravana whatever adjectives valmiki gives to ravana almost all adjectives he gives to ravana too to my knowledge which is very little no other poet in the world uh described or glorified his villain like valmiki ravana is described in such a way that almost all the all the features which not features all the adjectives which are given to rama are given to ravana ravana is called as tapasvi ravana is called as mahatma ravana is called as so many words uh, ravana is called as shastra vit ravana is called as veda vit esha esha ahita agnischa mahatapascha vedanta gah all these adjectives come to ravana but valmiki did not do this in a deliberate way but valmiki did not use one adjective for ravana that is dharmatma <laughs> valmiki did not avoid this word deliberately okay it just happened valmiki could valmiki couldn't see ravana as dharmatma all other things are Val, uh, ravana is a rasika ravana has high aesthetic sense okay ravana is a vedic scholar <laughs> can scholarship be dharma somebody is uh, very sincerely uh, reading ramayana and uh, he knows very well veda okay so this veda gyana and ramayana knowledge can this be called as dharma it can be called as dharmic we expect one who knows ramayana one who knows veda to be dharmic we expect many a time 
they are dharmic therefore we expect but sometimes they are not dharmic too tata shastra vipuschittam shramayeva hi kevalam if one doesn't practice dharma even after learning all shastras then his efforts to learn shastra is a great shrama says valmiki that is what we see in ravana ravana is a great scholar of both veda and other shastras with this great scholarship such a great scholar he is and he is also a great tapas but still he did not know a very fundamental thing even an idiot can understand what is that we should not commit the blunder of adultery <laughs> this fundamental thing after learning all shastras ravana transgresses this ethics so for this vital reason valmiki couldn't see ravana as dharmic therefore the word dharmaatma is not used for ravana regarding rama this is a very important adjective for rama dharmaatma satya sandascha ramo dasarathir yadi paurushecha apradiddam daha sarayanam jehiravan oi lakshmana takes the arrow lakshmana is fighting with indrajit for 3 days and 3 nights lakshmana couldn't win indrajit indrajit also couldn't win lakshmana they are equally powerful equally mighty both of them feel very difficult to win each other finally what happens lakshmana takes an arrow and says to that arrow my dear arrow sare yenam jahi ravani you win this ravani you win this son of ravana if shri ramachandra is if shri ramachandra is dash 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 and dash what we may think if ramachandra is bhagavan if ramachandra is omnipotent if ramachandra is omniscient if ramachandra is a supreme parabrahman oh indrajit you go and kill that sorry oh arrow you go and kill that indrajit this is what lakshmana is going to say finally the adjectives which are there for rama here have become very simple chappulu vedutu he is not telling rama as bhagavan or superhuman or god ultimate simple adjectives very two two simple adjectives dharmaatma satya sandascha dharmaatma satya sandascha if rama is dharmaatma and satya sandha you go and win indrajit any other adjective may come to a person but these two adjectives are not so simple these are very fundamental dharma and satya anything can be there the shastrik scholarship can be there or tapasya can be there so many things or may be highly religious or may be highly great scholar all other things can be there but fundamentally is he dharmic regarding that thing which appears to be very simple valmiki wonders rama only for this reason rama is dharmic rama is dharmic that word dharmaatma cannot be used for ravana in spite of ravana's shastrik scholarship and tapasya it clearly shows that tapasya or shastra scholarship alone is not dharma that's a thing so disciplines just disciplines cannot be dharmas he is highly disciplined he is highly punctual for example we call somebody as highly punctual i love his punctuality because this terrorist announced at 9:30 am i am going to uh, uh, perform a bomb blast 
exactly at 9.30 a.m. without failure, he blasted. The bomb blast happened. How punctual he is, how sincere he is, how committed he is. I wonder, can we tell like that? He may be committed, he may be sincere, he may be punctual, but he is not dharmic. We see a bomb blast in front of us where millions of innocents are killed. He is not yet dharmic. He may be committed. And he has dedicated his whole life for what? For this terrorism. He has dedicated the whole life to kill thousands of people. Lots and lots of invasions we see in the medieval history. When the history of uh, the, the, when, when we see the medieval history in the last uh, thousand years or even last uh, last uh, thousand five hundred years, hmm. what the human race committed in the world. We can't be proud by telling that human race is a superior race. No. No other race had committed such cruel genocide which the human race performed. The two humans uh, have the habit of killing their own race. Everywhere, in the name of religion, in the name of patriotism. Okay. Can patriotism be dharma? In Australia, in Africa, in America, going everywhere and telling I am obeying my queen's order, my king's order, my religious leader's order. I am killing these guys. Then how can you call these things as dharma? Mm -hmm. My country, for my country, for my country's sake, I am enslaving India. I am enslaving Africa. Okay. Then such kind of patriotism, how can we call it as dharma? So these things cannot be, yeah, again I recollect, I am not against patriotism. Again, I recollect, uh, patriotism is not bad, but uh, patriotism cannot define them. That's important. Patriotism cannot define them. Dharma is something more than patriotism. So, now let us come closer to Dharma. We have seen how religion is not Dharma. Patriotism is not dharma, constitution is not dharma, rules and regulations are not dharma. Let us go further. P. Ethics. Above all, values. These are closer to the word dharma, but they also cannot be exactly called as dharma. Value. Value, if you take human values in general. Uh, let us see some examples. Sometimes we may call obedience as dharma. Obedience, obeying the elders, obeying the parents. Can it be dharma? The Vedic uh, uh, order starts with that Matra Devo Bhava, Pitra Devo Bhava. What a coincidence. Commandments also start in that way. Hmm? Jehovah starts the commandment in Bible. Uh, honor your father and mother. That is how he says. So obeying the parents is there. And obeying the Guru, obeying the parents, obeying the elders. Can it be called as dharma? Again, obeying the parents can be dharmic. It is not the definition for dharma. Because sometimes obeying the elders also may lead to adharma. If uh, the parents give adharmic injunctions, Yudhishthira went for gambling, 
for two or three reasons. One of the reasons is I can't transgress the order of my periyappa. I cannot transgress my uncle. This is one of the reasons. The second reason is Nahu Toham Prativarte. If somebody is calling me for a war or for a gambling, I cannot refuse because this refusal, this refusal is not conventional. If somebody calls me for a war, I cannot refuse. That's a fact. Because even if I refuse, that guy is going to beat me. I can't refuse. I can't refuse. Somebody is calling me for a war. If I refuse, yet he will be beating me. But uh, logically, I can refuse if somebody calls for gambling. I can. He can't beat me. Okay. But I go there to gamble. Simply because a Kshatriya should not refuse gambling invitation. This is convention. I should not be unconventional. Therefore, I need to go to gamble. With this idea, Yudhishthira is coming. And he also says, I can't transgress the order of my Periyappa, therefore I go. This is what Yudhishthira says. So, following the elder, being conventional, cannot be always dharmic, because that also sometimes can lead to gambling. This is an example. Can lead to gambling, later for which Yudhishthira suffers. And finally, what happened in his life? A great transformation. In Udyoga Parva, Yudhishthira, there is no other go. Yudhishthira happened to transgress the order of Dhritarashtra. After 13 years of patient waiting of Yudhishthira, Dhritarashtra sends a messenger named Sanjaya. Sanjaya also is an elderly person for Yudhishthira. Well, Sanjaya comes, Yudhishthira prospects before Sanjaya. Sanjaya says, My dear Yudhishthira, I brought a message from your Periyappa uncle. He says, For all these years, you got habituated in exile in forest life. Why can't you continue that? Why should you wage a war with your own brothers, your own Duryodhana, your own darling Duryodhana? Why can't you continue the forest life? And uh, of course, forest life is Moksha Marga. Why should you enter into this politics and all? Winning and all. Give up all these things. Your Sabhava is Moksha, therefore you go to forest life. This is what uh, uncle told you, Sanjaya said. Bhimasena, Krishna, Arjuna, they all got bewildered because they are shocked. I don't know. We don't know in what way this guy, Yudhishthira, is going to respond. He may swadapify you now. <laughs> he may, I don't know. We don't know. Okay, the, is this uncle's command? Let me follow. Let me go, go to the forest. But thanks for this advice. Yudhishthira may tell. But even the very Yudhishthira got transformed. Dhritarashtra made Yudhishthira to get transformed in these 13 years. After listening passionately to Sanjaya's uh, words, Yudhishthira says, up to this time we have patiently waited. Hereafter we are not going to wait. If Duryodhana is not going to give our share to us, certainly he is going to see the war. So here, anyhow, Yudhishthira happened to uh, transgress the words of uh, Dhritarashtra, Dhritarashtra. And what he does here is right. What he does here is dharmic. 
He learned a lesson in his life. Yudhishthira learned a lesson in his life. After all these 13 years. Why I am telling this? Sometimes elders may instruct to practice adharma. Just by following the instruction of elders, if somebody commits adharma, then it cannot be taken to be dharmic. It cannot be taken to be dharma. Therefore, you, we can't define elders' instructions. Obeying elders' instructions, obedience is dharma. We can't tell like that. Well, Kaikeyi says, Kaikeyi orders Bharata to accept the kingdom. Bharata refuses. Bharata scolds Kaikeyi. Why this is because we, we can't tell that Bharata committed wrong thing. Bharata is a sinner. He is holding Kaikeyi. He, he did not obey Kaikeyi. We can't tell like that. Bharata scolds Kaikeyi because Bharata loves Kaikeyi truly. It is Bharata who has to correct, who has to rectify Kaikeyi. It is Bharata's prime duty to rectify Kaikeyi. What he does is right. That is Dharma. So it's not just obeying, obeying elders alone cannot define them. Let me give some other examples for human values. Maybe uh, 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 tolerance. Can tolerance be dharma? Tolerance is a good practice, but it cannot be always dharmic again. The soldiers of our nation are standing in the borders. When the opponent soldiers are coming to attack the country, if they say, if our soldiers say, <coughs> we should be tolerant, we should be benevolent, <coughs> we should stand for this Ahimsa. Our land is a land of Ahimsa. Therefore, let, let us give up war. There are some philosophers Great philosophers who say these wars are man-made and uh, respecting the Javan, honoring the military people, these are all artificial. <clears throat> Thousands of massacres are happening and this is very unfortunate. This kind of war is unnecessary. Respecting a Javan is not a great value. By this we are promoting war. You might have uh, heard these kinds of statements from some great philosophers. Territory is just a notion. Territory is just a notion. Just for this notion, thousands of people are fighting each other. And therefore, defense is wrong. Military is wrong. You might have uh, heard such kind of statements from some great philosophers. I agree. Territory is notion. Definitely territory is a notion. We agree. We, we feel sorry for thousands of people getting killed. In the battlefield, we feel sorry for that. But unfortunately, this is a trend. Unfortunately, we can't give up. We can't bring this philosophy into practice. That is why Shankara Bhagavatpada. However great Vedantic he may be, fortunately, he sharply divided. He has two terms. One is Paramartha, another one Vivahara. Okay. The philosophy, the wisdom which he has, that is from the uh, absolute plane. Okay. Paramarthika level. But in Vyavaharika level, in transactional level, if Dharma has to happen, all these Vedas, all these transactions, for transactional sake, all these Vedas are true only. 
it is called as vyavahara satya vyavahara satya up to the time in which we are in vyavaharika world this vyavahara is true only all our upasanas are true all our karmas are true even the battlefield is true our jawans are true honoring jawan is must we can't just brush up all this brush away all these things oh these are all just notional these are all idiotic we can't tell like that because they are saving our nation our nation has to be saved shastrena rakshite rashtre shastra chinta pravartate we are peacefully sitting now and having discourses of dharma it's just because some military people are standing in the boundary of the country without even seeing uh, uh, the climatic conditions there even in that uh, severe cold in uh, siachal our soldiers are standing for our sake therefore we are peacefully sitting here in our ashrama and talking about dharma if we don't feel indebted to them we become traitors in vyavaharika these are all true therefore we need to have honor our jawans and this viryam this parakram is a great dharma here their intolerance to is dharma when the opponents are attacking the nation these military people are fighting they become intolerant and this intolerance become dharma there tolerance is not dharma in that context in that context these are all the values obeying the father and mother tolerance these are all values they can be considered as values to that level they if they serve for dharma if they don't serve for dharma even the human values cannot be called as dharma human values cannot be always remaining as dharmic some many a time they are, remain as dharmic therefore we call it as dharma let me go to even higher level truth or non violence to that level let us go can truth be dharma many a time truth is dharmic shri ramachandra says satyam eva ishvara loke satyam patmasrita sada satyam satyam eva akshaya veda satyam nasti param param satyam is god for me this is what rama says we worship rama as god but rama says satyam is my god satyam eva ishvara loke satyam has a greatest value satyena pantha vidato devayana mundago prashit satyam eva jayate na anrutam satyam eva jayate is our motto in india our nation's motto is satyam eva jagate the satyam this truth is very important but sometimes what happens truth also can become adharmic a woman was chased by some hooligans some rowdies that woman takes the refuge in a tapasvi that tapasvi says you go and hide in my ashrama in my hut i am sitting in outside veranda you go and hide in the hut she hides inside those thugs are coming chasing that woman those thugs are asking this tapasvi have you seen any woman running by this way tapasvi is lying here no no i have not seen that becomes dharma here lying is dharma not only that here if that sage is uh, speaking truth that becomes adharma <laughs> it becomes adharma this is very important so truth also can become adharmic in some places therefore even truth cannot be the definition for dharma 
Okay. Many a times, yes, truth is dharmic. It's a very great value. But you can't define dharma as truth. So now let us go to the greatest dharma. Ahimsa Paramo Dharma. Okay. Why it is called as Paramo Dharma? Ahimsa is Paramo Dharma, they say. It is because you see this context again. The sage says, I have not seen that woman at all. We say that it is Dharma. If he would have told, uh, yes, woman is hiding here, it becomes Adharma. Why? Why? Because if he if he speaks truth here, those thugs will hurt that woman. So for the sake of hurting, for the sake of for the sake of uh, avoiding that himsa. This Rishi is lying. We can lie to give up Himsa. It means Ahimsa is the greatest to Dharma. <clears throat> in all these examples, for it, in all these examples, first we started with religion. Religion need not be always Dharmic. Because by the name of religion, many people were massacred. So again, Hinsa comes there. As Hinsa comes there, okay, we can't accept it as Dharma. Next, constitution cannot be always Dharmic because sometimes some laws are favoring some particular community, going against some other community, hurting some other community. So again, hurting comes, therefore, you can't take constitution as Dharmic. Always. Everywhere, wherever you avoid some element, consider something as adharmic, there you understand it to be hurting others. So hurting others is dharma, hurting others is dharma. Sorry, hurting others is adharma. It means non-hurting is dharma. Ahimsa is dharma. Ahimsa paramo dharma. Ahimsa paramo dharma. Not hurting others is dharma. We have to tell like that. Am I hurting others or not? This is the thing. If I am talking this truth, will I hurt or hurt others? If my truthful words are hurting others, I should not talk that. So, Ahimsa is Dharma. This kind of conclusion we can come. Ahimsa is the greatest Dharma. This is what we find. Ahimsa Paramo Dharma. This is what we see in Shanti Parva Mahabharata. This kind of statements we can see in Manusmurti or Mahabharata. Ahimsa is the greatest Dharma. But this is not enough. We need to further explore. Because Ahimsa to what extent Sometimes Ahimsa can become Adharmic. Sometimes. Same thing which I, I uh, uh, talked about uh, um, tolerance. Okay. If the military people say this is a land of Ahimsa, therefore let us give up their weapons. Then again it becomes Adharmic. Our soldiers need to attack the opponents who are coming to capture our country. Sri Ramachandra says, we are holding the bows, we Kshatriyas are holding the bows so that uh, the innocents need not cry alas. Kshatriya hi dharyate chapaha na artha sabdaha bhavediti. This is what he says. To give that security, we are having the bow. We are having the weapons for security purpose. Not, not just for defense purpose even. For security purpose. Defending means defend, defending for myself. For secur security for others. Security for all others. This is Kshatriya Dharma. Kshatriya Dharma. There a Kshatriya, Kshatriya is hurting. Kshatriya is hurting the opponent. Himsa is there. 
in doctor surgery himsa is involved a surgeon's surgery himsa is involved in kshatriya's war himsa is involved yet that himsa becomes dharma therefore perhaps dharma may be something more than this ahimsa too okay so we are not contented with the definition of ahimsa for dharma let us go beyond that too let us further explore dharma in the next session so in this session we have dealt we have seen what is not dharma again i repeatedly recollect because we should not uh, uh, mistake the principles we should not be misled ahimsa is great truth is great tolerance is wonderful all these human values are great i agree the religion is great constitution is great but what i i want to say is i want to present is they need not be always dharmic please don't get struck with these terms misunderstanding these terms as the definition of dharma dharma is something beyond all these terms we we respect these terms we revere all these principles concepts yet uh, we should not get contented uh, with these things while defining dharma dharma is beyond all these terms and let us further explore what is that dharma dhanyawad ram ram